This video uses three examples from the chicken genome to illustrate common uses of clone placement data. The first is find genomic clones that contain a gene of interest, then use clone placements to recognize a genomic region with potential misassembly, and finally use clone placements to recognize potential structural variations. A companion video that focuses on clone FTP content is linked at the end of this video. Very briefly, clone placements are created by aligning end and insert sequences on genome assemblies annotated at NCBI. To generate a clone placement for end sequences, both ends, forward and reverse, must be placed on the same assembly molecule. For the first example, let's find clone placements in the region of the chicken WDR3 gene. I'm starting in the genome data viewer, but if you happen to be in a gene record, you could link from there to the same GDV display that we are about to see. I'll select the previous chicken assembly, Gallus Gallus 5.0, but that is simply because our three examples better illustrate the utility of clone placements in that particular assembly. You might want to have a look at the WDR3 gene region in the updated assembly to see how it has improved. To get to the region of the WDR3 gene, use the search box on the left. We now see the WDR3 gene model. The next step is to add tracks for clone placements. From the tracks menu, mouse over NCBI recommended track sets, then select assembly support. This adds a predefined group of tracks, including clone placements for the three libraries with the largest number of placements. Clones with unique concordant placements are displayed as solid blue lines. Unique discordant clones display as a solid red line, and multiple discordant clones display as dotted red line. This clone also has a gray background, indicating that not all end sequences associated with the clone support this placement. If you wanted to, you could add other clone placement tracks in the genomic clone set. And notice that you can upload other data, such as one of the GFF files on the clone FTP site. Okay. We're now ready to identify good clones for the WDR3 gene. I'll adjust the zoom a bit in order to better see the assembly gap, and I'll also add a marker for the gap region, and I'll need to scroll down to see the clone tracks. Now you see that the CH261 library includes several blue clones, those with unique concordant placements, that contain this assembly gap. So we've met our first goal of finding genomic clones for a gene of interest. Let's move on to the second example, a quick look at using clone placements to assess the quality of an assembly. In this case, to recognize a genomic region with potential misassembly. I've moved over to chicken chromosome Z, and we see a dramatic change in placements from unique concordant to discordant at about 72 megabases. This change occurs in all three libraries, indicating a likely misassembly in the region. The DNA source for this 5.0 assembly is the same as in the CH261 library, but different in the two other libraries, further suggesting a misassembly here. In the final example, we look at clone placements that indicate possible structural variation. I've moved over to chromosome 21. And here we see a few smaller regions in the JAC and JAD libraries with placements of both concordant and discordant clones. This mixture is suggestive of structural variation, but additional analyses are needed to verify this, including closer evaluation of boundaries and possibly sequencing of clones to narrow down locations. Notice that the end clones from the CH261 library have only concordant placements in these regions. Remember that the source sequence for CH261 is different from the other two, leaving open the possibility of genomic variation in these regions. That concludes this tutorial. Please use the Support Center link found on most NCBI pages for your questions and feedback. We would love to hear from you.